Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to explain example 5 on T beam analysis, which will be double reinforced. So, we have a T beam which is a part of the floor system, span length given to be 6 meter, which is the beam length 6 meter, and beam spacing, which is beam to beam spacing 2.5 meter center to center. They ask us to determine phi mn, which is the strength for moment, f prime c, f y modulus elasticity given, and dt is given. dt is the distance for the, from the last layer to the top of the beam. Since we have three layers here, so we have d, which consider to this from the centroid of the beam, and dt, which is from the bottom, the bottom layer, dt. Now, at the top, you have 2 phi 6, 2 phi 36. At the bottom we have 7, 5, 36. Now in this example, AS is not given directly. Uh, what is given? A area of bar. Each bar area given to be 1006 mm square. So if you have 7, so we 7042 mm square. For the top, will be 2012 mm square. Because each bar area is given. Area bar. So slab thickness or the flange flange thickness 100 millimeter and then d prime is given to us which is from the centroid of the top steel d is given b w also is given now bf again is not given here bf we have to find it by ourselves because we know that bf can be found with the rules that we know it now here it's a part of the floor system, both sides you have it. So it's T-beam, you use 1 over 4, which is the solution I'm going to follow. So, in order to start, it's in, I'm following the same methods in the lecture note, method 2. So we have, first we'll start with an assumption. This assumption can be come after here even. I mean this can be done in the beginning, because this does not depend on the assumption. So BF will be the smallest of 1 over 4 the span, which is 1 over 4 times 6,000, because the, the beam length is 6 meter. So this is 1. The second one, we said BW plus 16 HF. BW is 300. HF is 100, given here. This is HF. And it's going to give us something and center to center spacing is given to be 2.5 meter which will be 2500 millimeter now we'll choose the smallest one which here come out 1500 now start with an assumption here since it's method 2 we're not going to assume anything we just assume now here we have two assumptions because we have compression steel then you have summation uh, sorry f s equal to f y f prime s equal to f y both steels we assume to be in a yield. Now, in method 2, what we said, we said we're going to assume that the top of the flange is, for example, the BF completely will be under compression. We assume that this will be completely under compression. To see, would it be enough to resist or to be equal to NT? Because NT, we have it here. Now we have two NC by the way at the top. There is one NC coming from the steel, which we call NC2, or here you can call it NC steel. And there is one NC will come from where? From the flange. One NC from the flange. So there will be two NC resisting NT. Still we can assume that let's say do we need area in the web? Do we need area here or no? In order to know this one, we said we assume the flange totally is under compression and we can, here we compare the summation of both of them to NT. Before there was no steel, so we only compared NC flange to NT, but here because we have steel also, then we compare the summation of both of them with NT. So we will go to calculate NC flange, which is for the concrete and NC, it is compression for the steel. Now, if we assume NC flange 0.85 F prime C, we assume the flange completely under compression, which we said HF BF. You have the values 
so you substitute this will be the NC flange on the other side we have NC steel as well which is A prime S FS prime but because we in the beginning assume that FS prime is equal to FY so it's written as FY and this is giving us NC steel now the summation of those two should be bigger if if not should be we compare the summation of those two with NT if it's bigger than NT we know it will be rectangle if it's smaller will be true TV on the other side we have NT ASFY which is going to be 2 million 957 Newton now the summation NC total which is the, the, co the combination of the flange and steel together if you sum them together there will be 3 million 500 something and they are bigger than NT now what does that mean it means that not all the flange is required for the compression it means that we don't need even the web so this gives us an idea that we only need a part of this flange to be used as compression so most probably we will use a part of this flange something like this as A as B will be somewhere here so we can all use only the top part somewhere here which will be compression so we call this one rectangular T-beam now recalling rectangular T-beam analysis for doubly reinforced so you're going to do the same analysis remember even if it's t-beam here it doesn't matter because it's going to be rectangular doubly reinforced now in rectangular doubly reinforced we had two z there is one z between those two and there is one between those two here you don't need to go for uh, but you can make this one nt1 nt2 as well it's possible to do it it's possible to do that one but with this method also it's easier to manage it no need to make it AS1, AS2 the only one this is Z you can call Z1, Z2 or Z for the steel, Z for the concrete so you don't need to go for AS1, AS2 you can use the top because you know that it's rectangular so it will be easier to find their location we'll continue finding A remember this A we will find it will be based on an assumption F is equal to FY, F is prime equal to FY. So it's written here the beam is rectangular T beam. The whole flange is not under compression. Less it's under compression. So we will start with NC equal to NT. We have concrete steel should be equal to NT. We have the values. But what will we do here? Look the steel is still the same. The NT is the same. Now the NC concrete here will be different. Why? Because we don't need the full flange so we'll, we'll find NC concrete the, the part that the concrete is supposed to handle remember in the double reinforced we said that a part of this NT will be carried by the steel and the other will be carried by the concrete now 2 million something Newton will be carried by the concrete well what is the equation for NC concrete 0.85 F prime C now he will write A times BF remember still we have what we are on the top of if this is the flange and remember we still this is going to be the bottom we are using a part of the flange because we don't need a whole flange that's what the method 2 is telling us you need a part of this flange we call it A and we call this one BF so the area of concrete that will be under compression we call this one A times BF that will be straight line here it's hard for me to draw it so anyway so A times BF is the area of the concrete which is under this is rectangular T beam because the, the compression area is rectangular so we need to find this A because the steel carries a part of the steel here they carry a part of NT so the rest will be carried by the concrete for A found to be 87.9 millimeter now here we have some uh, technical things that we should know that if A like A is 78.9 millimeter if A is smaller than D prime what will be the problem a simple question we have it here look if a is smaller than d prime what does that mean you have to think of this one 
Now, this is the steel, yes, 70. So, A should be somewhere under this because we, let's say, A here come out to be 70 something. Now, what does that mean if you have A is normally it happens if you don't know how to design if someone uh, ill designed the beam sometimes this a will be too small too small what does that mean if it's too small it might be somewhere here it might be somewhere here so where is the neutral axis that's something else the location of neutral axis i don't care about this one i'm talking about the neutral axis but the a basically if small it's an indication that the, the, the compression steel you place it it's somehow a lot because you're not using the concrete for anything the steel is carrying the steel at the bottom so you're not using the concrete in an efficient way I'm not discussing these detailed things but better to know that you want to use the concrete at least so that's why I mean out of this 100 millimeter you have it for the top you could use 90 millimeter of it so you can decrease the steel and it's still the design will be designed you can save some steel in this manner that will be something else for the student interested in saving money in the design they can go follow a lot of things that you understand here remember you can play with these things and you still have the strength remember you're using steel and concrete together to, to carry the tensile force at the bottom so you can may arrange it in an efficient way here we have nc uh, a to be 78 so we're not going to discuss this detailing here well we have a we change it to c as we know from beta and from table that's c we don't know if those are correct or not because there is two assumptions we have to check fs and fs prime if those two summation those two assumptions correct then we will directly go for the moment well checking them we're gonna use and we have to check for phi as well so we have first for absolute prime s we have point oh 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 seven three seven we're checking for absolute s is point oh one i mean this is way bigger than point oh five so et is already I mean ET is greater than ES since ES is greater than 0.05 so for sure phi is 0.9 no problem but what's the problem we have it here absolute prime S is smaller than absolute Y by the way EY it's written somewhere here if I'm not wrong yes absolute Y found here dividing this by this one changing the unit you have 0.021 so here what does it mean it means the A that we have it they are not wrong they are not right because a and c they are not right why because f prime s is not equal to fy so if this is not equal to fy what does it mean we have to find a new a or new c we call it so we find new a now new a basically means new c because changing it to c it's easier than a so new, new c we have to find it look because it's not so we have to find finding it what will happen we come back from the beginning we will come back to the beginning but instead this time we cannot write f y we will leave this one as f prime s because you don't know this one it's not equal to f y and this a also it's wrong the one that we found it not true because the assumption didn't come out to be true so remember we're changing both of them to same we're changing both of them to the same constant which is c we change a to beta 1 c and we change f prime c to be absolute prime c times e is and absolute prime c is this is the equation so you're substituting all of them into here you will end up having what just c because substituting 3 in 4 this will be the equation of f prime we did this one before f prime s and then substituting now you can 2 and 5 so it's written here 5 and 2 into equation 1 you change it we changed a to c and we changed fs to c we are arranging this one multiplied by c then rearrange it now oh, there's a rearrangement here you have to do it by yourself which will end up by an equation of quadratic so c squared c 
is this one equal to zero you go quadratic equation you'll find c remember please uh, i put it here i changed like i wrote a c here i wrote c here so i changed the equation here this one to d so if you i, I told you that a lot of times student me fixing this one when using quadratic equation you can use your calculator you can directly solve this equation by using solve on your equation calculator so I'll give you two values you neglect the negative one you will choose the positive 110.15 now this C we convert it to A this will be 93.9348 millimeter now luckily this is less than 100 luckily this is less than 100 this is less than 100 if it was more than 100 what will you do you will start doing uh, finding another another a what would be why we have to find another a it is if it is more than 100 because all of our things were started that we don't need this part here imagine if a come out to be 110 it was here so it means there is something wrong with it, yes? Because now the area would be what? Will be as a T-beam. So we have to go back and find another another A. So here, in the second time, when we find new A, new A, like new A come out to be 93. If this was bigger than 100, where do I come back? I'll come back to the same procedure here, similar here. But this time I will change this area as well. I will change this area. This no longer will be rectangular. We will repeat the same procedure. We will find a new A. I will change the things, sure. But you have to repeat and find a new A. Then continue. So here, phi, you can recheck to, be, to see whether the phi is still 0.9 or not. So you find epsilon t is 0.01. It's way bigger than 0.05, so phi is still 0.9. Now, we need to find epsilon prime is the actual, the actual epsilon prime is. It's 0 0.001, 0 0.001. Now, if you convert this one to f prime s, you realize it's 219, almost 220 megapascal. Look, f s f prime is come out to be somehow 220 megapascal and if y we have it here that's why we, we, we found if y f prime is not equal to if i look at it the difference between them a lot now this is means that it give you a room that you can somehow rearrange your design because you're not using the full capacity of the steel you're only using 220 megapascal of the steel you could manage it to go for this one and this is something can be done but anyway i'm not talking about optimizing design just to understand that when we found f prime s is not equal to f y so we expect that f prime s to be lower than 420. how do you find it when you found a new a new a you have new a new c you can go and calculate new epsilon prime s and you know hook slow we can find f prime s so finally we came to a point that we can use phi mn now here phi mn you can write it in two ways whether with ntz or with the concrete and the steel it's recommended to do the couple one here because you you need two z here z between the concrete so i'm going to draw the shape here it's recommended in this way to do it because of that I'll exaggerate them a bit bigger so you can go find the centroid of this one with the but I don't recommend to go for the centroid one so there is a s at the bottom which has nt at the top we have a s prime and a part of this is under compression so we have also two values there one value will be for nc2 we call nc steel and there will be one which is nc1 nc concrete we call it 
NC1 start for the concrete now where is the location of NC1 we know a it's 93 it's around 93 93 so it's basically somewhere at the center of 93 this one is the center of this is where is the center of this steel bar now the center of the steel bar we know up to top we call it D prime and we know from here till the top we call this one D we already know this one so the distance between those two which you call the Z2 or Z steel it's D minus D prime and for this one to this we call Z2 or Z1 let's say Z1 for this NC1 and that will be what will be D this distance we call what this distance this is a over 2 a over 2 we know that z here it's, it's d minus a over 2 sorry for the writing today I don't have the tablet to write it down so z minus a over 2 no, sorry d minus a over 2 this is z1 you have z2 now that's why we don't prefer to use nt times z because you have to find one z the average of between them resultant it's recommended to use the top two in order to find a moment so we have z2 z1 nc2 we know this for the steel nc1 knows for the concrete so it's written here nc concrete is one z concrete z1 if you're comparing with the other one before nc2 for steel z2 for steel so we have it here values you have everything look here that's why we found we needed f prime s if someone say why we need we found f prime s here because it's not equal to f y so i have to use the new f prime s multiplying everything substituting divide by 10 to the power 6 we found that uh, mu here already called phi mn you can write it as phi mn is equal to 1728 or 29 kilonewton meter the capacity of the brain so it doesn't matter now whatever the shape will be you have doubly reinforced you still use similar ideas remember assumption that you do need to be checked if they don't follow you will change you'll find a new a new c each new time that you find it you will make sure that you will follow up with the things that you have it so there are a lot of things that may change while you're doing your uh, analysis because remember we start with something then something didn't come out to be as according to assumption we found a new aid but still we recheck to see whether we're going according to things or not it needs an understanding to follow these things to be able to fully understand how the beams is working that will be the end of this chapter. I mean, you have this solution within the chapter. It will be the end of the chapter. So remember what will happen. Now I recommend you to uh, draw, do analysis. Imagine you put more steel here, put more steel here, and that time you might need more concrete. Put some steel here. For example, for example, just try to put more more steels here and try to reanalyze this one and that case will come out through TV to see how do you solve us through TV doesn't you already know through TV how does it work but the NC steel will come into the part as well so I recommend you to solve something uh, which you might expect it to happen in the midterm to be prepared if you have doubly reinforced T beam doubly reinforced T beam when it come out as through TV. So I need you to solve something to prepare for that one for the big care. Thanks for watching.